go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a wonderful employee, Madison, is actually filming our wonderful videos tonight. Michael Gar is here. He is my producer overnight, heading into the weekends, and he does all of the heavy lifting. So for his uh, enjoyment tonight, a couple of chili dogs. There you go. And the Holiday Cup, ladies and gentlemen, collectible from the Brighton Hot Dog Shop. Your Pepsi and the best cup of coffee in town right here. So let me put this over here. Right, now listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk Steelers football right now. But before we do that, because I know you love hockey. Pens lost last night 4-3. But you said, I can live with that loss to the Rangers. Tell me why. Yeah, well, the Rangers are a good team. Um, and I think it's a good uh, division rival. And they always play some good games against the Rangers. And they usually win, actually. So. Uh, last night, I was actually there, I watched it, and they hit a number of posts, the Penguins. I think uh, in the second and third period, they outplayed the Rangers by a lot, uh, outshot them, and um, you know, it's just one of those days where the puck doesn't go your way. But I thought they looked really good, and I thought of getting Malkin looked really good. He was flying all over the ice. You know, Tristan Jari, the guy who's been replacing Matt Murray, who's going to be out for a while longer because of this lower body injury, uh, you're all good with him. I am, yeah. He's played really well for a rookie. He's only played seven or eight games in his entire career, but he's really uh, held his own, and uh, it's good because Murray, uh, he's had a couple injury problems, uh, you know, in his career, so this is just another one. He should be out for, I think, another couple of weeks, but um, Jari's definitely held his own, and it's a good situation. All right, now we uh, talk still his football. Word today, just before I came here, Ryan Shazier back in Pittsburgh after being at the University of Cincinnati Hospital. Still no update on his medical condition. We are all keeping him in our thoughts and prayers and we wish him a whole lot of luck and a speedy recovery. Juju Smith-Schuster suspended. Listen, I'm not a coach, nor have I ever played one on the radio or on these videos, but that looked like a clean hit to me. Yeah, I thought him uh, stepping over Vontaze perfect. I thought that warranted yeah, a yeah, lot, yeah. for sure. Um, but yeah, to me, it's interesting because Rob Gronkowski also got a one-game suspension, the Patriots tied in, and his hit was right after the whistle. It was the play was dead, and he intentionally went after a player, led with his head, and headbutted a guy. Juju Smith-Schuster was... The taunting is what got him. Yeah, the taunting was, was, was my problem, but for me, I thought it was a clean block. Yeah, maybe it was a little high, maybe he could have gone a little lower, but I didn't think it uh, deserved the same suspension that Gronkowski got. Here are some statistics uh, from the home office. There were four penalties for unnecessary roughness, for unsportsmanlike conduct, one for roughing the passer, and another for taunting. The Bengals self-destructed with 13 penalties for a team record, 173. By the way, it was also the first time that both Bell and Brown each had 100 yards receiving. By the way, Brown took a nasty hit that came up and was able to hold on to the ball. Obviously, Chris Boswell on the final play. What is it with these two teams? They, it's not football. It's actually pretty scary. And uh, someone said on Twitter that it's not a rivalry he looks forward to, and I agree with them. I think it's more of not football and just these guys are out to hurt each other, and that's not good. I mean, you know, it's... These are two division teams that I think have the potential to be a real rivalry, but these guys just go after each other. I think Burfecht is the leader on their uh, on their team when it comes to dirty hits. Um, I just don't think he cares about football. I think he cares about hurting people, and I think the Steelers are fed up with it. So you get hits like what you know, Schuster did, and um, and they're tired of it. So it's just it's too ugly for me. Um, you know, Steelers Ravens, I really like. Although the Ravens, are Sunday. Not favorite. yeah, but that's that's a real rivalry. It's good football, and it's it, there's nothing wrong with physical football. You know, good clean hits, but Cincinnati Pittsburgh is just it's too much. All right, I'll do my little impression of Steven Spielberg. Madison, you can move around with that camera. You can come in close if you want, just to kind of show the folks the beautiful digs that is the Brighton Hot Dog Shop in Beaver. Thank you very much. Now. Um, as I mentioned, they won this thing 23-20. Final play of the game, Chris Bodwell, Boswell gets the, the field goal to win it. But Ben Roethlisberger, 290 yards, two touchdowns. And you know, with everything that's happened with the Giants, Ben McAdoo is out, Eli Manning, I can't help but start to think about Ben Roethlisberger, future Steelers. But I'm also just realizing that I'm living in the moment of witnessing a great talent. Can you imagine where this team would be without him? And it may be soon that we're going to have to imagine that. What do the Steelers do? I mean, you got a player like a Baker Mayfield out there, Mason Rudolph out there, mm -hmm. some great college players. But, I mean, it's kind of uneasy if you're a Steeler fan, and we all are, to think about life 
without Ben Roethlisberger, sooner or later, it's going to happen. Yeah, it could happen after this year. So I would just, as a Steeler fan, I would just appreciate uh, what we have going, and hopefully they can make one more Super Bowl run. But I know his time is nearing as an NFL quarterback. And, um, you know, you look at the number of teams, I'd say 15 or 20 teams that their quarterback just isn't that great. I mean, you really appreciate Ben. Um, so, yeah, it's a tough situation. Um, you know, it will be a tough situation when he leaves, but every team goes through it, and you just have to enjoy the moment. All right, quickly, they take on Baltimore Sunday night football in America, NBC, Heinz Field, 8.30. Uh, Vance Williams and Bud Dupree have been playing some pretty good football, to say the least. Cam Hayward, a real team leader. Um, i got to say, this Bell, as far as his versatility, catching the football, is just incredible. And it gives you another weapon. Ramon Foster has been a real anchor on the line, despite everything that's happened with injuries and suspensions. Um, but Joe Flacco, who was drafted in 08 out of Delaware, the guy who did start off University of Pittsburgh, but ended up matriculating out and ended up at Delaware. 269 yards, two touchdowns. They get a win this past weekend. They are on a roll. Coach, uh, i, I got to tell you, he's got to be very excited with where his team is going in, uh, in Baltimore right now. Harbaugh would have liked to have had a better start, but I'm sure he's got to be very pleased because this team really could have just simply folded their tents and went home. And you've got Terrell Suggs, who had a sack in that game last week. He's still playing at a high level in his 14th season. Yeah, they, uh, they're still a team to be uh, reckoned with. Um, they're right in hunt in the AFC picture. Um, and obviously when you play the Steelers on national TV, that's you know really going to fire them up. I mean, they already get fired up enough playing the Steelers, I'm sure. Um, so it's going to be a good game. The Steelers, obviously the big ones next week against the Patriots, but they don't want to look past this Baltimore game. I'm sure they're not. I'm sure they're focusing and ready to go. But, uh, yeah, you want to win this game because Baltimore is playing desperate. I mean, they're still, like I said, they're fighting for a playoff position. Well, and they, so they, and they beat a good football team rather handily, Detroit. 44 to 20. Yep. Any closing comments about the Steelers now 10 and 2 on the year and definitely in the driver's seat in the AFC North and right there with New England as the two best teams in the AFC North and they will get together coming up on December 17th. Yeah, I just think it's interesting how so, there's been so much off field drama. Uh, you know, Martavis Bryant early in the season and you know, Le'Veon Bell during the preseason. Obviously, Juju Smith Schuster with the suspension right now. It just seems like every week there's a new storyline. But on the field, they're the best team in the AFC right there with the Patriots, which I think is interesting. Sometimes, you know, we can forget how good they are. Um, so take care of business this week, and then you've got the showdown next week against New England, and that's probably going to determine who gets home field in the playoffs. Listen, folks, I spent literally just a couple of bucks and got all this good food, hot dogs, Pepsi, coffee. So it's still the best ticket in town, the Brighton Hot Dog Shop. Coming back. Talking PIAA championship action, which begins tomorrow in Titletown, Hershey, Pennsylvania, next.